It looks like we finally climbed to the top of the tier list. Now that we're a year into Ultimate, we have a lot more results to measure and more patches to go through. While a lot of the tier list has changed, top tier hasn't as much. With a year into the game, it's becoming clearer what characters have the stuff to be S tier and which characters just had MKLeo playing them for a few months. We're looking at you, Ike. Some characters are even pretty unanimously top tiers at this point, like Peach, Pikachu, and Joker. If you're wondering just what makes a top tier, we actually have a video on that. But we'll sum it up here too. Top tiers tend to have a few bad matchups, but still beat most of the cast. They got at least one area they dominate at, and only have a spot or two where they're mediocre. So in this section of the tier list, you'll hear us talk a lot more about the strengths than the weaknesses. Before we dive in, if you're looking to improve on your own strengths, don't pick up a top tier. Just go to ProGuides.com and try a live coaching session or a course from MKLeo or ESAM. You'll be in the top tier too, with our help. We should also mention that our tier list and this video isn't ordered. We'll leave it up to you guys to tell us who you think is the best in the game right now. Alright, let's get this tier list started with the characters who moved up the top tier since our last video. First up is Wario. Wario always had strong potential and a pretty good spot on our tier list. With his damage potential and kill potential, we all knew he was at least gonna be high tier. We moved him up to top tier because Wario's strengths clearly became so overpowering that his weaknesses didn't matter nearly as much. When we're talking overpowering, we're of course talking about Waft. You know, the deadly gas blast that links into a ton of Wario's moves and kills characters at like 60% or less. In this world of disjoints and projectiles, we initially thought that Wario could get walled out and kept out of Fart's reach too effectively to be in top tier. Now, seeing what Gluttony, Tweak, and other top competitors can do with the character, it's clear Wario is just too dangerous. He may have the best kill power in the game, on top of one of the best combo games and a lot of good neutral tools too. This dude's got a command grab that can kill, and a motorcycle. Although Wario still has to work to get in on his opponents, his great airspeed, great combo game, and lethal waft make him top tier. Our next addition to top tier is Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon Trainer has a ton of versatility as a character, and while Ivysaur got nerfed and Tweak dropped the character, Charizard got buffed, and it's looking like more and more PT mains are unlocking Squirtle's potential as an elusive little combo machine. Between the three Pokemon, PT mains have an option for most scenarios. They can build damage at all percents and get kills super early too. They've got a lot of good out of shield and defensive options as well. It is possible that PT mains get stuck on the wrong character for the wrong situation, but having access to three different kits is still super valuable. The invulnerability on Pokemon Swap is still a super useful combo breaker too. So we're saying that this trainer has officially battled their way up the mountain and into the smash equivalent of the Elite Four. We're also still seeing some pretty good results with PT and seeing competitors like Pupe and Pandarian rewarded for sticking with the character. You can find good PT mains across the globe too, like Leffen in Europe and Atelier in Japan. PT will probably still fluctuate in between top and high tier on a lot of tier lists, but don't expect them to drop any lower than that. If we're talking about combo breakers, we should talk about Snake. Snake has been top tier since the earliest days of Ultimate, and even though he's seen a drop off in results, he hasn't dropped out of top tier. While Snake isn't making as many major top 8s and grand finals like he used to, he still has the best toolkit of any zoner in the game. Snake's frame 1 grenade makes him very hard to approach and combo. His C4 makes him great at controlling the stage. His Nikita invalidates a lot of recoveries, and he's basically one of the best ledge trappers in the game. On top of all that, Snake has weirdly good frame data and a lot of surprisingly fast and strong aerials like his down air. Uh, yeah, that down air has absolutely no business being frame 3 and doing as much damage as it does. Right now, he's struggling a bit more because he has trouble landing and recovering against some of the really good rushdown characters in the game. However, we're already starting to see MVD make a resurgence. Plus, there's reason to believe that more time gives Snake players more room to think and create new strategies. And his up tilt is still busted. Let's talk a little more about those rushdown characters. Peach and Daisy make for a good starting point. The princess might just be the best rushdown character in the game. Peach has insane combo potential that works at lots of percentages. She can 0 to 60 a lot of characters, but she can also 20 to 80 or 40 to 100 characters too. That's a big deal because it means you can't just counter her by trying to avoid certain combo starters at certain percents. On top of combos, all of her hits do a surprising amount of damage, including her turnips. Her turnips give her added range and defensive ability that many other rushdown characters don't have. 
Her float lets her edge guard and spam kill moves really well too. Put it all together and you have a character with insane offensive potential. Peach also has pretty strong results, even outside of Samsora. Japanese Peach main Umeki got 35th on the PGRU, and Dutch Peach main Meru is one of the best players in Europe. Since Peach has a crazy high skill ceiling and lots of tight combos, there's a good chance this character just keeps getting better too. If there's another character that has even more untapped potential, it might just be Pikachu. Unlike Peach, Pikachu doesn't have a ton of results beyond the best Pika main, Esam. Similar to Peach, Pikachu has a lot of tight combos, unique tools, and room for optimization. A lot of top players note that while Esam is a fantastic player, he can be too aggressive and kill-hungry to show the full potential this character has. While Pikachu has the speed and combo tools to get aggressive, he also has a lot of great tools to camp. His quick attack makes him really elusive and hard to edgeguard or ledge trap, and his Thunder Jolt is a great, easily spammable projectile that can help him control the stage. Even though Pikachu doesn't have the same results or player base as some of the other top tiers, he's got a lot of potential. And a lot of great frame data, great combo tools, solid pokes and options in neutral, good grab range, and a tiny pancake hurtbox that can make him super hard to touch. Oh, and he might have the best edge guarding and recovery in the game. So if we see even more Pika mains come up with even more styles, then we could see this character get to Joker and Peach levels of representation. The top tier has two electrifying and hard to hit rushdown characters. The second is Zero Suit Samus. ZSS has one of the best moves in the entire game in the form of Flip Kick. This move alone could make the character high tier, and does wonders for ZSS's disadvantage. Even though ZSS is a light character, she can be super hard to kill because Flip Kick makes her super hard to hit. On top of Flip Kick, ZSS has a great combo game and one of the best tech chases in Ultimate. Her mid-range options and fast aerials make her pretty good in neutral too. ZSS doesn't really have a weak area of play and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the cast. Her hurtbox is a little tall and she dies easily, but she's got Flip Kick, so that kinda doesn't matter much. ZSS has more than just raw mechanical strength, she's got results. We all know Mars just took down MKLeo, but over in Japan, ZSS is even more popular. Choco and Kuro got 26th and 18th on the PGRU while representing ZSS in Japan. Samsora and a lot of other players use this character as a secondary too. ZSS did get a nerf in patch 7.0, but it was just to the bury mechanic on her flip kick, which doesn't attack any of her core strengths. This character is a bit more colorful than electrifying, but they're still very hard to hit. Inkling is another fast, elusive rushdown character in the top tier. Huh, what do you know? Looks like being fast and hard to hit is maybe important in this game. Inkling's low-profile dash animation makes the character naturally tricky to catch and great at catching out the opponent. That's because in addition to having one of the best dashes in the game, Inkling also has one of the best dash grabs in the game. So not only is Inkling ducking under your attack, they're getting a grab afterwards. And that grab will lead to damage, tech chases, and of course, one of the easiest and most consistent kill confirms in the game, up throw up air. On top of all that, Inkling just has good moves. Their back air is large, disjointed, and pretty safe on shield. Their recovery has a big hitbox and isn't easy to interfere with. Their neutral air is a nice get off me tool. The roller is great if you've conditioned opponents to avoid shielding to dodge the dreaded inkling grab. And their jab does a disgusting amount of damage, and not just in terms of percent, like mental damage. You gotta stand there and watch a 12 year old squid kid paint you fluorescent orange for like three full seconds. Sure, Inkling doesn't have results that compare to other top tiers, but between Cosmos and Space, the character is still doing well enough to be top tier. As far as fast rushdown characters with reliable kill confirms go, there's nobody quite like Fox. Like Inkling, Fox has a fairly easy and pretty reliable kill confirm that works inside a nice big percentage window, neutral air into up smash. Fox's high speed makes him opponent combo character in general. He can chase down one hit and chain it into another, staying in advantage for a while and putting on a lot of damage. His super fast moves make him pretty good at starting combos and anti-airing opponents as well. Like a lot of other rushdown characters, he is a bit light, but it doesn't matter as much as you'd think because he's so quick. Fox also has great ledge trapping potential with his neutral air. It activates so quickly and lasts so long that it can cover pretty much any option at the ledge. Since it can chain into up smash, it's also super deadly. Fox's only real weakness is his recovery, and even then, it's mostly a weakness against certain other top tiers. On top of his generally great offense and solid defense, Fox has excellent results. It used to be that Light was the main star in the world of Fox mains. 
Now, Japan's best fox main, Passeriman, has taken off too. He got fourth place at EVO Japan just one month ago. If you ever speak of a character with a great neutral air, you gotta talk about Pelotana right after or else someone's gonna bring her up. This whirlin' twirlin' nair machine of a character has a lot more than just one aerial. She has a super solid toolkit that makes her an easy top tier. Palutena did get some of the heftiest nerfs of patch 7.0, losing kill power off of down throw and neutral air. While these nerfs will be noticeable and will make it tougher out there for Palu mains, the character should have enough to stay top tier. Don't worry, Naifus, your dude will still be making top 8s. Palutena still has a lot of great raw kill moves like back air or even dash attack. Palutena still has great edge guarding capabilities and one of the most unique movement tools in the game, warp ledge canceling. She's still weirdly fast, and she can still carry you across the stage with her neutral air, then she can back throw you off of it. Overall, she's just one of Smash's most well-rounded characters. Her ability to react to pretty much every situation and have an answer for every phase of the game makes her strong. Her only weakness can be scramble scenarios where she's really getting rushed down. She can struggle against some other top-tier characters, but she's a goddess for a reason, and she's not being rivaled by a lot of those mid-tier mortals. If Palutena isn't the most well-rounded character in the game, then Lucina might be. Lucina has a good enough mix of speed, disjoints, and good defensive options that she could be top tier for the entire game, barring balance changes, of course. Lucina does lack raw kill power as well as kill confirms, meaning she needs to go for shield breaks or edge guards to get those low percent kills. However, her great aerials and awesome recovery make her pretty good at edge guarding and challenging opponents in the air. She has the safe aerials and hitboxes that you need to be good in neutral and ultimate as well. While Lucina doesn't have ridiculous combos, her big disjoints make her great at juggling opponents and staying in advantage. So she can still build percents, she just does it more through frame traps in her advantage state. She's also getting some pretty good results with Proto Banham as well. Now for the Phantom Thief himself, Joker. Joker rounds out our top tier as one of the most dynamic and exciting characters we've seen in Ultimate. His edge guarding, his drag down kill confirms, and his quick speed make Joker about as exciting as he is strong. Joker also got notable nerfs this patch, reducing the width of his down gun hitbox so it's easier to punish his landing and making his Arsene meter deplete more when he's hit. Like the Palutena changes, these nerfs will be noticeable and could put Joker lower down within top tier, but they shouldn't take him out of top tier altogether. Joker still has some of the best edge guarding and pressure tools in the game. He still has great safe options he can use in neutral. He still has good ways to build damage and take kills. And he still has that big ghost man in the top hat who will beat you up if you try and bother him. While Joker's disadvantage state is worse now that his down guns have been nerfed, he still has great aerials and a small hurtbox to help him stay safe, and he still has his obscenely good counters. Joker's defense took a hit, but the hit basically knocked his defensive game from top tier to high tier, and his offense and his neutral are still definitely top tier. Don't expect to see Joker disappear into the shadows just yet, and don't expect MKLeo to use another character to steal the tournament away from his competitors. That's it for our top tiers, and for our tier list. What do you think? Who's going in your top tier? What could we have covered in more depth? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to see more from us, just hit the subscribe button. We've got videos releasing every weekday. If you want to turn yourself into a top tier player, you should head over to ProGuides.com. And even if you don't, feel free to stick around and leave some comments. We'd love to hear from you guys on how you'd order the top tier and what videos you'd like to see next.